Hello and welcome once again to In the Growth Space. This is the show for leaders who have a hunger and thirst for growth without compromising their values or their priorities. I really appreciate you listening in. My name is David McGlennon and I'm really grateful to be your host. You know, my goal here with the podcast is to help you, our listener, to to really move forward with your own growth in whatever area of life you're focused on. You know, some of our listeners are looking to grow their business, and perhaps that's where you are. Um, Maybe you're trying to grow your, your business team. Maybe you're trying to grow your own career or your personal financial life or Maybe your spiritual life or, or just your, your overall leadership. You know, we approach growth from a number of different perspectives. And, and recently I've had some leaders on the show sharing their story from our inner circle groups because, you know, they've been very intentional with their growth and, and, and really leaning into it. And I really wanted to highlight them because they've got such great stories. And we can all learn from other people's growth stories. And today is no different. Today is another leader who's been on a growth journey from being a member of one of our emerging leader inner circle groups and now is part of our growing leader, advancing leader inner circle. And his name is Ryan Prescott. He currently leads the operations project management team at IDL Worldwide, and he's been in account management and project management for close to a decade. And, you know, he's advanced in recent years to manage uh, his current team of project managers. And as I mentioned, Ryan was a part of our emerging leader inner circle and and now a part of our, our newly formed advancing leader inner circle with other leaders who are also growing and learning from each other. So we're going to hear some of his insights about his growth journey today. And I know that you're going to enjoy meeting Ryan. Well, hey, Ryan, great to have you here on the podcast. Um, welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited to share your story with the audience because you know, you've been in, in my world for a little while, and, and you've been part of um, some of the groups that that I've uh, that I've run. And I'd love to just kind of start with, like, where where do you think your growth journey really began, and 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 like, how did you get like a growth mindset as you think back on your career? Yeah, it's a it's a good question. Um, I'm I'm a little unprepared, but I feel like that's the best you want me. Uh, the most Absolutely. authentic. Absolutely. Authentic version. Um, but, you know, I, I had joined, uh, I've been in the industry for about eight years and my focus has been uh, project management, account management, um, the print industry, design industry. And I think um, when I first really tipped my, uh, put my toes in the, the growth space water um, <laughs> was really whenever I transitioned over from um, making my career and my priority from from project management to, to people oh. um, and I realized that this whole time you know I'm thinking that my uh, my focus and my skill set and my passion was project management and it's still something I love um, but my my real passion is, is people and I think that's whenever I started to explore what we call a growth space yeah, yeah. No, man, I love that. I, that's 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 exciting to to hear that transition. W- was there a was there a pivotal moment for you at, at some point that like like caused you to to think about developing people and and or was it just kind of natural for you? Um, I, probably a little bit of both. I think some of it was natural. I think to be honest with you, um, I'll toot your horn a little bit. <laughs> and it's, uh, but uh, you know, you whenever we went through the emerging leader inner circle. Um, you were always uh, encouraging us to go out and practice what we were learning in your sessions. And I had found that whenever I was out doing that, that was when I enjoyed my day and Mm. my job the most. Um, Mm. Sure, I love putting together layouts and ordering material and (laughs) managing a project. I mean, there's a part of it that I love, but I, I had quickly realized that the thing I liked most about my day, even though at the time I was so far from perfect at it, which is where your sessions always came in, uh, (laughs) was whenever I was um, practicing what we were learning in your session. And I quickly quickly realized 
maybe what I enjoy the most about this is the people. Mm. That's cool. I, I think it's cool from a couple of perspectives. First, just the fact that you actually, and you leaned in to the, the, the work that we were doing in the group, which I thought was really cool. And I, by practicing it and getting uncomfortable outside of the, you know, the, the, the safe space of the group was really, uh, I think, what helped you propel you into that next, next phase of growth. And, and now you're part of um, the Advancing Leaders group, which is, is cool, too. Talk a little bit about how that prepared, the Emerging Leaders prepared you for your, your new role, because you, you actually got a promotion and you're in a new role now. So how did that prepare you and, 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 it, and maybe not prepare you, too? So I think what I enjoyed most about um, the emerging leader inner circle and what um, same with the growing leader inner circle that I'm in now is just being surrounded by mistake makers, (laughs) uh, normalizing everything and and humanizing, I guess is a better word. Um, Just being able to talk um, about about being imperfect and and failing and lessons learned and for me it's really just being submerged into the group of people going through the same exact thing that you are um i'm not even sure i appreciated emerging leaders when i was in it you know i was getting a lot out of it but i don't think it was until afterwards that i was like man i wish i was i wish i could and it's not that your cohort doesn't exist afterwards, you know, you, sure. you always have that cohort, but it was like, I really appreciate it. It's like, you don't know we got till it's gone. <laughs> so now that I'm in uh, the growing leader in a circle, I'm hungry for it every week. I, it's just, it's so cool to be, um, it's so cool to be just with all of these leaders uh, and new leaders is my favorite. Cause it's, I'm, I'm still a new leader. It's maybe been a year. Um, and it's, that's my favorite part is being around, uh, around the new leaders and just learning. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, that's great. And, and, you know, I, I, I love the group environment because I think that to the extent that you're open and you, you lean in and, you know, you really engage, I mean, you can really get a lot out of it, but you can also give a lot as well. And there's a lot of satisfaction, you know, with that process. What, You know, as you, as you've as you've moved into this new role, what do you think is like the most challenging thing for you in terms of of leading people and 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 learning that process of just leading people? That's so interesting. I feel like that's something I'm battling with currently. Um, I think the biggest challenge, I think, as people, as human beings, I think we all are afraid to fail. I think that maybe we don't want to admit it, and I think the most challenging thing and how I realized I could best support my people and help them feel better about failing was me first admitting I'm also afraid to fail. Mm. And it wasn't until, it wasn't until I can't even remember who said it. And it's like the simplest thing that I feel like would be on like my grandma's kitchen (laughs) or hanging up in it, in it. But sometimes the simplest things have such a stronger meaning when you're in the moment and you're going through the situation. And that quote was, um, you're not, uh, you're not failing. You're learning. Yeah. It just like blew my mind and it made it easier for me to admit that like I'm I'm at there, I'm failing sometimes, you know, a lot about leadership and management is uh, you can hear something a million times. You can have the best mentor, but sometimes you don't learn it until you fail at it, um, until you've responded emotionally once or twice, until um, you've screwed it up. And I think that, and I'm not sure if I'm answering your question. This is great. That was it for me. Is I, I had to learn and be self aware that I'm also afraid to fail, and that failing's okay, and that it's not failing if you're learning. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, that's so good, Ryan, because I, I think that so often and you, you hit it right, right on the head. I mean, I think so often people think that they've got to get it perfect and there is no such thing as perfect, really. And um, you, you mentioned a word uh, and, and I'm curious about it. Self-awareness. 
how, how did you get your self-awareness and how, how do you continue to get your self-awareness just as you grow as a leader? So I had recognized, um, that's such a good question. And I, so I had recognized when I was a, a project manager that whenever I would be going through an issue with the brand I was working on, the client I was working on, the project that I was working on, when I was in the heat of it and riddled with anxiety, I had remembered that the mentors that made me feel the best while still giving me feedback, you know, that's not all sugar and you know, sugar coating. It's, yeah. they were still giving me feedback, but the ones that made me feel the best were the ones that I noticed were the most self-aware. Mm. Uh, they had given me feedback and examples from whenever they had failed. And I liked that. And I challenged myself, which is very hard <laughs> to be more self-aware mm. um, because it's, hard to be self-aware it's hard to be vulnerable and admit that you know you're you may not be the best at something or that you're still working at something and um i quickly realized when i had that approach with my team whether it's my team now or a team that i was uh, influencing at the time because not all leaders are people leaders yeah, sure. uh, that that is whenever i got the best reaction or the most honesty honesty or i started building the most trust um so that was probably it for me. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about, talk about building trust with your team too, because I, I think that oftentimes leaders don't realize that by being, you know, open and being honest and authentic, that they really can build such great, great trust. Like how, how have you found that? I mean, how, and, and how have you built that trust with your team? <laughs> by doing it the wrong way. <laughs> uh -huh. It's so funny you say that I, I have somebody on my team uh, that is being promoted soon to a new leader in a different department. And I had told him, I said, hey, um, lean on me if you ever have any questions. Uh, because if there was a wrong way to do it, I did it. <laughs> you know, and, um, I, and you just got to be honest about it. Um, right. You know, if, if you, if you, um, or having a conversation with an employee and you think you could have handled it differently, bring them in a week later and tell them that. Say, hey, yeah. I'm new at this. I'm mm -hmm. new at this and I'm determined to be great at it. And I want to let you know that I don't love how I handled that situation. It doesn't change my intent. It doesn't change the, the message I was giving you, but I think my approach could have been better. And I want you to know that. And I think that that's how I build trust is I let them know, hey, you may be a new project manager. I'm a new manager. Uh, so we're on this journey together and um, I hope you, I, I, you just got to let them understand that. And I think what, what helps is, or really what the coolest thing is, is then you see them start to do that in their project mm. planning meetings yeah. um, and with other leaders or colleagues in the business. And they're more comfortable to say, Hey, I actually don't know what that material is, or, Hey, I've never built a layout or, Hey, maybe I should know what screen printing is by now. And I don't. And I think the more people get, the more I can do that and build trust with people, it makes also makes them comfortable enough to do it um, with their peers. So you're modeling it then for them. You're modeling that, that openness and, and then that kind of becomes your culture within the, even the, within the department then that's what I'm hearing you say, right? Yeah, totally. And I, and I think, I think, and, and all departments are great, but I do think culturally we're becoming one of the departments to model off of. Mm -hmm. but I say that knowing that it wasn't always that way. It wasn't even always that way when I was leading the department. Uh, you know, oh. I, you have to get your foot in. And I think the more you talk about that, um, you know, I, I actually sometimes write my emails um, when, I'm, when I'm sending an email to the team. I'll even write them as recovering micromanager, Ryan. <laughs> that's great you know, but it it just yeah. allows us all to be a little more vulnerable um and it just when when the time comes that there is feedback it, it's incredible to see how it is taken um because then we just have a, a, a different sort of relationship yeah and i think that that's what at least what i'm hearing you say too is that the the way you're leading is is you're developing that relationship with the people that you're leading and you're doing it by being open, being honest, and, and even 
um, recognizing that you're not going to get it right all the time. And, and when you don't, you go back and you just admit to it. Um, but then you also have those speak straight conversations as well. You have to be able to have those. And I know those aren't, you know, fun, but, um, you know, how have you found that in terms of just being able to do the, you know, do those speak straight conversations and really how help someone move forward through an issue or situation? I think it kind of, I think it goes back a little bit, not to duplicate my answer, um, but I think it does go back to my first answer is I, I always try to be relatable. Um, mm-hmm. You know, if I can show somebody, hey, I've made mistakes and I've been here in the industry for eight years and an IDL for almost four. Mm-hmm. Um, if I can show them, hey, I made those same mistakes I'm, and I'm still here. Because let's yeah. let's be honest, everybody at the end of the day does not want to get fired. Right. They don't right. want to get in trouble. They don't want, everybody thinks the worst, right? Right. So, if I can be relatable and put it back to me and say, listen, I made all the mistakes. I made a $7,000 mistake two years ago and it, I still think about it, but I'm still here. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think I it, it just got to be relatable. Yeah. And then I want to help you learn how to not make it the next time. And I want to help you understand the why behind what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I, and it's, I'm, I'm finding, finding success in that, in that strategy. Yeah. And I find it because I think people are, are doing that for me. My leaders, my managers now are, are doing it the same way. I didn't pull it out of thin air. You know, I sure. think some of it is natural. Some of it is trial and error, but some of it is, you know, I'm learning some best practices from, from my leaders and my mentors. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's successful with me. Yeah, uh, it's, I I try try similar things out. Yeah, well, you you mentioned you know leaders and mentors and and how like who who do you look to for and it doesn't necessarily have to be like within the the, the company, but who do you look to for mentor mentorship and 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 how do you you know find people to 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 show you how to lead? What's your what's your process there if you have one? Uh, it's funny you say that. So my last manager, who um, is a huge mentor of mine, and my current manager is very much becoming a, a new mentor of mine, could not be any more different. And, mm, really? and nothing wrong with that. It's actually pretty cool. And what it's taught me is to seek out different kinds of styles until I find my own. Oh, that's good. Um, because in such a short time, I've learned a lot from two different styles. So now when I need the advice of something or I need advice on something, mm-hmm. um, I go to two different kinds of leaders. Yeah. You know, I may um, go to more of an emotionally uh, strong leader, maybe one that's more technically strong, maybe one that's more, mm-hmm. I can go on and on. And I, yeah. and I want to hear feedback from a couple of different people and, and, and glean trends from all of them. Um, and until I find my style and I finally feel like I'm finding my style. Mm. So to answer your question, I think I look for mentors in more than just one person. Yeah. Yeah. That's until good. I find my, my complete footing and hopefully I never find my complete footing. Um, I think that as I have new projects or new tasks or new teams or, uh, I will, my style may evolve. Yeah. It should evolve. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Well, and, and as you, as you continue to evolve, what, like, talk about the, like those new, either new tasks or new projects that you've never done before and just kind of getting outside of your comfort zone. What, like, what does that feel like? And if you could describe it, like, how would you, I guess, how would you describe getting outside of your comfort zone and, and, and what does it feel like for you? <laughs> yeah, I, um, I will say that I'm currently in that situation right now. Okay. Um, and and you probably <laughs> love that. You're probably feeding off of that. <laughs> no, 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 no. But I, 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 I used to manage uh, the project management uh, team for two out of the four verticals business so convenience retail and grocery my my could not have been a more comfort comforting place for me i felt safe there okay 
the projects I manage fit right into that. Yeah. Um, so recently when I took over the other two verticals of the business uh, for the operations project management team, um, they were, they are, uh, uh, so it's, it's called SGK and in innovation. Um, so two completely, so I guess the best way to explain it to uh, someone that might be watching that doesn't know IDL, um, one is a partnership with our sister organization, SGK, um, to really grow the relationships that we had or have with SGK. Um, a lot of really cool globally recognized brands. Um, some call those more of like the sexier brands. Uh, okay. I don't know if I'm going to say the one here, so I won't. Yeah, and, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's like the Apple, the Starbucks. Yeah, sure. You know, um, sometimes a little more exciting. Yeah. Uh, High profile. Yeah. Not that convenience retail and groceries, not. Um, sure. And so whenever, um, whenever I, I took over the other two verticals, I, I think for the very first time, even maybe I, I, maybe I thought I had been there before, but for the very first time, I really was experiencing imposter syndrome. I was like, man, did they make a mistake? <laughs> like I must've <laughs> talked my way into this and I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, and then I had realized, um, and, and he may not know this, but my manager, I had heard him on a, on a meeting and I can't remember exactly what it was. And I had heard him say, I don't know what that is. And it was in a room of people mm. that all knew what it was. I, I even knew what it was. And <laughs> I was just so taken aback that this person didn't know what it was and he got to the answer so much more quickly because he was willing to, to ask the question. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh. um, you know, not that I'm like faking it until I make it every day, but there are times where you're like, I think I should know that. You know, <laughs> did I miss that email? Yeah. <laughs> right. And, um, I, it, so I just, I ask, I just say, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is, especially IDL. Sure. A great place to work, but we overuse acronyms and it's laughable. I'm sure. Like, I, we could, it's, it's, it could be an SNL skit. It is, we, we way overuse acronyms. I feel so bad for new employees. We're trying to get better about it because we are a little more aware of it. A directory um, of. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So now I'm just like, I don't know what that means. You know what I mean? Or can you tell me what that means? Or and sure, it, sure. And so that's that's my answer. Is it just yeah. to it a lot quicker? Well, so talk about that imposter syndrome because here's what I know about any leader. I don't care if you're a CEO, if you're a project manager, it doesn't matter where you are on the spectrum of leadership. We all deal with that that thing that's called imposter syndrome, imposter experience. We question ourselves and it's that inner critic. I, I, I'm kind of curious as you get outside of your comfort zone and as you're, you're doing some new things and you're dealing with it, as you just said, you're dealing with that, that, that inner critic. How are you dealing with it? Like, how are you making sure that you're, you're setting that, that voice aside and actually, or, or not, maybe you're using it to kind of help you to, to, to grow. I'm, I'm just kind of curious because everybody has a different um, approach and I'm just kind of curious about yours. I think you, I think you have to do what everybody is terrified to do. And I think you have to ask for feedback. Mm. Um, you actually told me a long time ago um, when I told you that my love language is words of affirmation, Yeah, but I, it's not quite words of affirmation. You said, I think what you're trying to say is words of confirmation. Mm -hmm. like confirmation that you're directionally going, you, you, mm -hmm. you're doing what's asked of you and maybe more. Um, and it stuck with me and mm -hmm. it will always stick with me that in, in my professional life, I, I like words of confirmation. I like confirmation that I am, I am doing what is expected. Um, yeah, that's or, cool. yeah. So, but the, the hard part is, is that you have to sometimes ask for it. Yeah, sure. What you ask for kind of thing. <laughs> That's where like, you have to be okay with, you know, failing is learning, you know, and if, right, and if right. feedback, feedback is learning. So you have to be in that comfort space uh, because sometimes you'll get that and that's okay. Um, yeah. But you got to ask 
what, how I'm doing, you got to ask, um, to, in order to get that, that, that word, those words of confirmation. Mm, yeah, that's, gosh, that's so good. Yeah. You know, it, you, you talked about feedback and, and, and oftentimes I think that there's a lot of leaders that, that they ask for feedback, but they don't realize that feedback is, I think feedback is all positive. It's, it's all, it's, it's either motivational. In other words, Hey, here's what you did. Right. And, and, you know, keep doing that. It's motivational. And here's, here's something that you could improve on. It's developmental. It's something that I didn't do as well. And so I, I think it's, it's like two, you know, two sides of the same coin. We're getting that feedback, but it's helping us to continue to get better. And, and, you know, if it's, if it's something that we did well, then we can keep doing it. But, and, and so I, and so often I think feedback kind of gets a bad rap. Yeah, it does. And I, and, and I think the reason why, so I can't tell you when it happens or how it happens, but until you reframe how you think about feedback, how you yeah. think about failing, how you think about uh, making a mistake until you reframe that, you're, it's going to be an insecurity and it's going to be the one that gets in the way of your growth. And it got in the way of mine for a really long time. Yeah. And um, I'm happy it did because I think I can pass on some learnings. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I do think part of it, you just kind of got to get through. Um, but I wish I would have reframed it earlier, learned how to reframe it earlier because I'm so much more comfortable with not being perfect, whether it's a project mm -hmm. management, whether it's... Whether it's being a manager, even in my personal life, I, I think being a a boyfriend or a, a friend or a neighbor, I think that until you can learn to to reframe it, then you're just it's an insecurity that's going to always be in the way. Mm, yeah, that's that's good. What um as as you look ahead in your leadership, what do you what are you working on next? I mean, what's the kind of the next milestone or or growth goal that you have for yourself? Oh man. That's a good question. Um, I think confidence. I mean, I come off as a pretty confident person, um, but I, you know, I'm not. And I think that that's probably what I'm working on next is just maybe not, you know, just looking like I, I'm, I'm confident. I do think that there's there's some some secret, there's some magic to that, like the fake it till you make it kind of thing. Sure. But I, I want to be more confident in in, in how I lead. Um, but I'm also okay with becoming okay with not being completely confident. And I, I almost feel like that's my, that's become my brand in a way. Oh, and, yeah. and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with saying, Hey, this is me. Cause it's going to happen over and over and over again. That This is my first time dealing with this. Mm -hmm. And if I have to start out a meeting or a conversation doing that, um, I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I think that, you know, we all as, as leaders have to deal with that, you know, confidence and, and sometimes we feel more confident than others, um, you know, in different situations. Um, but yeah, I'm so, I'm, I'm grateful that you shared that because I think that there's a lot of leaders out there that, that want to work on that and they want to continue to grow their confidence. And, and um, what do you think gives that to you? I mean, is, is there something that you're doing right now that helps you to grow in that confidence? I wear the same thing to work every day. <laughs> so you don't have to make any other decisions. One last thing I have to think about. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, again, I hate to duplicate my answer again, but I, no, it's I, okay. I think it's just, I think it's just being an open book. Yeah. I spent so much of my life not being an open book. Mm. Being an open book is just refreshing. And yeah. um, it's not about just saying it. Some people say they're an open book, you know, but you actually have to be, um, mm. you have to be okay with being vulnerable about all of it. Yeah. 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 That's so good. That's so good, Ryan. I, I appreciate you sharing that because, you know, too often, um, yeah, leaders want to hide things and they just want to hide and, and make people think that they, that they've got it all together. And, um, you and I both know that that's not the case. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're human beings. And, um, so, um, you, you, you alluded to it earlier in our conversation and you talked about, 
um, you know, the, 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 the other inner circle that you're now in. Yeah. Talk a little bit about the value of having other leaders around you, because I think that there's oftentimes um, leaders maybe don't understand the value of having other leaders around them. So I'd, I'd love to kind of just hear your perspective on that. Well, I think for me, the, the, the thing that's most interesting to me is that I'm on it with um, leaders that have been leading for decades. Um, mm-hmm. So for a lot of us that, you know, we're maybe a year into this, into this leadership journey and, and people managing, it's, um, I think it's really cool for us to see and uh, to see that they're, they're struggling with the same things. Um, so on, mm-hmm. it's twofold. <laughs> one part of it is like terrifying because it never goes away. <laughs> um, but the other part is that you see how much you see how much practice they've gotten um, handling with any situation, the good, the bad. Um, and I think that for us is probably the most, to me, that's made the biggest impact so far um, is that it doesn't, it's, it doesn't end year one. Yeah. And then every once in a while they learn something from us and yeah. that's pretty cool too. Yeah. That's a, that's a good point. I think that just by virtue of being around each other, you're learning it, you know, everybody, every situation is different. Your hot seat's different than somebody else's. And, and as you're sharing, everybody's learning. And I, I think that's the biggest thing that most leaders maybe miss is that we can all learn from each other. It doesn't matter if I'm, you know, been leading people for 30 years or, or three months. And uh, that's, that's really good. What would you, uh, what would you say to, a, 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 an emerging leader or somebody who is, is maybe somewhat new to leadership, what would, like, what would be your advice to them to, to have them get into their growth space? Oh, wow. I don't know if we have enough time for that. <laughs> Pick one or two things. I think the best piece of advice that I could give is that don't change from who you are. You, you said for a new leader? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Don't change who you, you know, so if I'm a, if I'm a project manager, yeah. And I got promoted to being a leader. Mm-hmm. I got promoted because of who I was as a project manager. Mm. So the way you handle things, the way you treated people, um, that should not change when you get an office. You know, you are, you are no better than anybody else. Um, and I think that that's the, the single best piece of advice that I could give is because it is very easy even for the best of people um, because you, you literally and figuratively are on a different hierarchy now, you know, yeah. you're on, you're, di- you're, you're in a different place in an org chart, but it's just an org chart. Right. And I right. think that you didn't get hired to be a boss. You know, you got hired because you were influential and because you were developmental and you were decent and you had the potential to grow into an even better leader. And, um, it's hard, you know, I, I'll never forget the first day I became a leader and manager. I was like, well, I gotta start acting like a lead. I gotta start <laughs> acting like a manager. I mean, I'm a, I'm a manager and that could come off the wrong way. That sure. can be, sure. yeah. and you just have to remember, uh, you have to be who you were hired as, um, they didn't hire this new version of you. So don't become a different version of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And, and at the same time, I think that you can you can continue to grow in that version of yourself and continue to to grow your you know emotional intelligence your leadership and 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 um and not not stay the same but yeah I, I get what you're saying for sure you don't you don't want to look at yourself as better than someone else yeah yeah and I don't think people do it with ill intention I think right that they they feel they need to play a part or um, yeah. Yeah. And it's, you don't. Absolutely. Yeah. You're right. I mean, I think, yeah, there, there's this, maybe this fallacy that um, yeah, we have like, we have this idea of what a leader is supposed to look like. Right. And yeah. it doesn't, yeah, there is no one right way to, to, to lead. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, that's good. That's really good. Well, um, 
Ryan, thank you. Thank you so much for just kind of sharing a bit of your journey. Um, yeah. You know, one of the things in, in these, you know, segments that I'm, I'm doing with, with, you know, leaders is just hearing their growth story, hearing their growth journey. And, and I think in, in a lot of ways, we all can learn from each other because of hearing each other's stories and, you know, the things that you've, you've learned and grown in, um, I, I've had a front row seat to, and it's been cool because I've been learning things too from you. And I, it's one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on here is because, uh, you know, it's just, it's amazing to see leaders grow. And um, so thank you. Thanks for being on. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Is there anything, anything we didn't cover that you want to like, you know, I'll give you the last word. So like anything that, uh, that we, we, we didn't talk about that you wanted to talk about. Oh my gosh. I really, I don't, I don't think so. I think just, just be yourself. I don't know. I, that's, that's, I feel like it's the most timely thing in my life right now at 32 is just, mm-hmm. just be yourself. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Well, thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you for sharing the story and uh, appreciate you being on. Yeah. Thanks so much. Well, there were so many great takeaways and lessons learned from Ryan's growth experience. And I'm really grateful for his willingness to to share it here. Um, you know, I loved the fact that he said that his growth really began when he began to make his passion the people rather than his his project management skills. And I think that's so important for most leaders who are really great. They begin looking at people as their focus. And I really appreciated too the fact that he really leaned into the the things that we were talking about and teaching in the Emerging Leader Inner Circle and and how he really got outside of his comfort zone and just practiced what we were talking about. The other thing that I thought he brought up that was really important is that being surrounded by other leaders who are growing and going through the same thing that he is, uh, is so valuable just to continued growth and and recognizing that we're never done growing. You know, the challenging part of, of leading people is, is failing. And he talked about that. He talked about failing as learning and, and really becoming self-aware through feedback. Um, I loved the way he talked about building trust and, and really being honest and authentic with your team members because we're all going to mess up. We're all going to fail. Um, we're all going to learn, as he said. You know, it's not failure, it's learning. And so make sure that you're you're honest and authentic with your team members because that builds trust. The other thing I, I thought was really great that he talked about was just seeking different styles of leadership through different mentors. You know, throughout the years, I've had different mentors and different styles of leadership in my life. And I can say that that really has in, indeed helped me as well. Well, and I also was really um, grateful to hear him talk about imposter syndrome and, and and just grappling with with imposter syndrome. And I know that so many leaders grapple with this uh, this issue. You know, just be willing to ask questions and be willing to not know the answers and 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 keep doing what other people aren't willing to do um, and, and keep getting that feedback as your learning cycle continues. I love the fact that uh, his his next growth goal is is improving confidence and just really um, leaning into um, managing that that imposter syndrome, the the confidence level, um, and and just listen to the growth language that he said as well. If you go back and listen, he says, "I'm becoming okay with." And, and I, I love that. That's such growth language and, and so that just indicates such a growth mindset. And so I think that we have to be, a, uh, be able to pay attention to the language that we use and um, the language that even other leaders around us use. Now, you heard Ryan talking about growing in confidence. Well, coming up in the next episode is a conversation that I had with an author and a consultant who wrote a book called 
better than confidence. Her name is Helen Fruin. And I want to make sure that you don't miss that. So be sure and hit the subscribe button. While you're at it, go give us a, a, a five-star rating and a, a review. Give us what your takeaway from this episode is. I'd really appreciate it. And finally, make sure that you uh, check out the Inner Circle Summit at davidmcglennon.com forward slash Inner Circle Summit 2022. We'll have the, uh, the link in the show notes, but make sure that you check out that Inner Circle Summit. We're going to have an amazing event this year, and I'd really love to see you and, and meet you there. So until next time, my friends, keep growing and be well. Mm-hmm.